Hey guys, it's Balding here and welcome to another Dual Masters video and um, this time we will be diving in depth um, into some of the most iconic or most um, standard decks I would say in Dual Masters which is um, or which are Darkfire Nature Survivor and Lightwater Alzonius and um, I don't want to talk about um, all the cards uh, in, in the deck. Um, I want to talk about specific cards and uh, more precise I want to talk about um, the individual goal of each of these um, decks and um, at which probability you can achieve those those goals and those plays. And usually when we start with uh, Dark Fire Nature um, Survivor the goal is to get out your factory shell um, as fast as possible. And um, yeah, I, I would say um, we will jump right into it. And um, But <laughs> before we start, um, um, credit goes to a German Dual Masters community member, uh, Mr. De La Serna, which um, you might know also from our uh, tournaments. And he created... Um, some kind of simulator where you can put in some conditions and um, this um, this program will yeah simulate like um, thousands of thousands of starting hands I think um, 10,000 um, specifically not only starting hands but which cards you draw until a certain point um, of course there is no interaction uh, with your opponent so if your opponent is going to discard you or um, then this will decrease the probability of your uh, um, specific plays um, but if your opponent is breaking so, some shields early this will increase your probability but <coughs> since this um, can't be taken into account like uh, consistently and there uh, would be too much va variables um, we will just go like uh, if, you, if you go uh, solitaire and we will simulate that so starting with darkness uh, fire nature uh, survivor. Uh, the earliest you can play Factory Shell is uh, on turn 4. And um, it starts with uh, Brawsome Tribe on turn 3. And um, in the next turn, um, you either charge Factory Shell or, or you have already charged Factory Shell and play Soul Swap on your Brawsome Tribe. Get out your Factory Shell, uh, search a Smash on, play Smash on, search another Survivor. This will be your, your most, um, uh, your strongest play. So, looking at the probabilities, we first start um, at the top um, and every other uh, like screenshot will be um, uh, built up the same. So, 40 cards in the deck. Uh, we have 4 Brossom Tribe, 4 Soul Swap and 4 Factory Shells. Also, 4 other Nature cards, um, which uh, smash on. So, we get a total number of 16 Nature cards. Um, and of course you have to uh, take in these nature cards into account. The other colors uh, doesn't really matter because to play Brawsome Tribe and Soul Swap you need only uh, a nature mana. Um, and the, we see the conditions. Play Brawsome Tribe until turn 3 and uh, play Soul Swap to get Factory Shell into turn 4. And at the bottom we see um, the probabilities. So when you go first Probability is around 18% that you achieve this uh, this goal. And going second, so drawing one more card, um, you will get 24%. Uh, so an increase of 6% when you go second. <coughs> and um, also these increases will come in handy like um, when uh, simulating something like uh, Elzonius or something where you can draw a card uh, early on. Um, so, for example, if you play something like Emergency Typhoon and Survivors, which you wouldn't do, uh, you could draw draw uh, two more cards, so you can increase your probability by a lot. Um, but again, you have to take into account you need some water mana for it, so um, and you have to see um, the uh, emergency, so you can't really say uh, um, that you increase your probability by 6% per card drawn, because um, when you go second, you draw... Uh, your uh, sixth card um, on turn one, 100 percent of the time. Uh, meanwhile, playing Emergency Typhoon on like turn two, uh, even if you play four copies, it's maybe something like 50 percent or so. Um, 
yeah, just just the the theory behind it. And now let's look um, at some um, um, at some other variables, like if we change um, the number of nature cards. And um, here we simulated um, what happens when you play like a four color version, when you add like light. Uh, you have also like for Sky Swords, maybe you will add um, Miraculous Rebirth and so on. So um, you will have 21 nature cards in total. And this only increases like uh, marginally um, by 0.7%. So it's like nothing. Um, so when you increase your nature um, cards, it doesn't really do anything. It, it, it doesn't achieve like... Um, a much higher probability of um, um, achieving your your power your power play on turn four. Um, and we also looked like what happens when you like cut one soul swap. So um, in my deck, for example, I only play three soul swaps because the space is really tight when you add a fourth color. Um, and we see it decreases your odds, of course, um, but only around like. Uh, three and a half, and um, maybe even less. But let's say around three and a half percent when you um, uh, cut one soul swap. So not that, not that much. Uh, so yeah, but every time I play against Survivor, um, it feels like they already have this play. But um, now we can um, maybe reach even more when it's only eighteen percent of the time. But um, yeah, I think it's quite it's quite interesting here. Um, but the main focus will be on uh, the light water Alzonius version because there are quite a lot um, variables um, where you can change your outcome. So let's first start with um, the the basic stuff. Um, we have a pretty standard. Lightwater Alzonius list, we play one arc, that's why you see like uh, one nature card here. <coughs> and with the bases, uh, we assume that we don't play any spells. In reality, you would play spells, but this will again um, change the outcome because to play uh, a Belix, you don't have to have um, a, a spell in your mana zone because that will set you back by a turn and you won't achieve the Alzonius until turn 5 play. Um, so your most important cards, of course, are Belix and Zirion, and um, these eight gladiators uh, are pretty standard. Everyone plays them, and of course the four Elzonius. So the goal is um, to play Belix and, Zir and Zirion until turn four, so you can play an Elzonius until turn five. And when simulating this with um, um, 100,000 iterations, uh, we see that uh, the number of successes when going first is around 55% and going second again you will draw a card one more card um, there um, it is 62% so pretty high already and um, now we will uh, look at some uh, or now we will change some variables for example we will add some bingles to um, to the deck so what, what happens when you play two bingles um, which we have seen the, in the past um, um, and we will see this here by um, in, in the next slide. Um, we don't only have like Belix and Syrian now, we have two more Bingles um, and the probability now is um, 59%. So an increase of um, around 4% um, to, to achieve your goal. Um, and of course, it, it is up to you to decide if the 4% is like worth adding to bingles or not. Um, I can only like, um, the, the interpretation is up to you. I can only give like my opinion. Um, if you, in general, arc is of course the stronger handguard. Um, a double breaker is far more threatening than just a, a single breaker, 3k single breaker, which can be walled by some early blockers like Belix, Juliana and so on. Um, but of course, it threatens to be evolved to Alzonius, which is nice. And um, yeah, we also have like an example when you go up to four bingles. So you have 12 evolution baits for Alzonius, and then you will have 
0.6 or 0.7 percent. Um, so again, two bingos, uh, 59 percent, and then only 61.6. So the the two more bingos going from two to four only give around like um, two and a half percent, so or 2.8 percent. So it's not that much. So you don't like stuff your your deck full of like uh, gladiators um, because that will make your deck worse and it's generally not worth to go up um, that many gladiators <coughs> so now we will look at um, what happens when you increase the spell count uh, of the deck so we again have the standard the standard version <coughs> with um, four bellix for zero and for we have our 55%. Now, what happens when we um, add spells? And um, uh, we have that here. Yeah. So, what happens when we when we add spells? We have three spells here. <clears throat> For example, three holy R. Um, the odds are decreasing, of course, because of Balix, but only very, very slightly by one and a half, one and a half percent, uh, around one and a half percent. I'm always talking about going first because that's what you usually uh, want to go to you, when you when you die roll, you go first. So, um, yeah, three spells um, only decrease like um, the odds by uh, one and a half percent. Um, next, we can go. What happens when you add more spells? Because usually you only um, you are not only playing like three spells; you are playing more. Um, here we have like six spells: um, four holy or two spiral gate. Um, of course, these are like exchangeable. You can play like um, yeah, instead of spiral gate, like energy stream or something, um, whatever. And um, we only took like four, four holy on uh, two spiral gate to have the number of water and light cards be the same. Otherwise, it wouldn't be like uh, comparable. And now we see like the decrease is only like 0.7%. Uh, uh, so again, uh, the more you add, um, the more diminishing um, the, the decrease um, gets. So from zero to three spells, we had one and a half, and then from three to six, we had like uh, point, point 0.8. <clears throat> so um, next up, let's see what we what changes when you um, increase the number of um, uh, light cards uh, to achieve your goal. <clears throat> Again, we have um, the basic, the basis, um, our fifty-five percent. Um, now let's change some water cards um, to some light cards and let's change some uh, light cards to some water cards. So first, um, when you like decrease the amount of light cards uh, by two and increase the water cards by two, um, we expect that the odds are um, decreasing, uh, which it does, but only by 0.5%. So again, pretty small. And the other way around, when we increase our uh, light cards uh, by two and uh, decrease the number of water cards by two, um, we will get a difference um, of like nothing, pretty much nothing. Um, of course, we rounded up our 55%, our 45.7, and now we have like 55.0, so it's like 0.3%, not even point two and a half percent um so yeah increasing more uh, or putting more light cards in your deck than like in in the standard version um doesn't really do anything in my opinion um but now we get to some interesting stuff because as we all know the deck list or, or I, <laughs> at least I hope um, you all know um, the deck list or some deck lists of Lightwood Alzinus, there is also some draw cards. And um, namely Aquahulkus and Magrus, but also cards that exchange the cards in your hand, like Emerald. Um, Emerald doesn't draw your card, but it puts 
a card down, which you don't need to fulfill your condition, your your um, your Alzernus play on turn five, and you get like a full card um, out of your shields, um, which will uh, increase your odds um, of getting Alzernus down by turn five. So again, we have our basis, fifty-five uh, percent, and on the next slide uh, we will add Aquahulkus, four Aquahulkus, and four Emerald. And this is something you would usually do. You, um, there was like, um, in my opinion, no downside. It is needed, in my opinion, to play those um, cards with uh, four copies each. So this increases um, your odds by around seven uh, percent, which is uh, quite huge, in my opinion. You add these eight cards, which are usually already in the deck, and these increase your odds <coughs> going first um, by around. 7%. And now when we look at um, adding Magris also, and this is where it gets quite interesting, <clears throat> when you add 4 Magris, um, it only increases your odds by like 0.7%, so 0.7% um, is like nothing. Um, you'd say, oh, yeah, I play 4 Magris standard, um, because I want to increase the odds of my Elzonius play, blah, blah, blah. But it only increases by like 0.7% even if you play four copies of Magris. <clears throat> Again, I'm not saying Magris is bad in the deck. I think it's um, a really good card. It fits the, the theme of the deck as well. <coughs> but it only increases the odds by 0.7%. And this is mostly because when you play Emerald and Trulkus, you still have one turn left, either... When you play Emerald, turn 3 and 4, or when you play em uh, Hulkus, turn 4, to play a Gladiator, to play Balix Osirian, and then turn 5 Elzinus. But if you play Magris, you don't have time to play Balix Osirian. So Magris will only help if you draw Elzinus from it. That's the only way it increases your odds, and that's why it's so low um, by like 0.7% here. And um, yeah, um, that's like the the main the main thing, or the the most interesting thing, which um, came to me after uh, Mr. De La Sena sent me those um, those odds and those probabilities. Um, but again, uh, Emerald Hulkers and Magrins are Magrins are not the only uh, cards you can. Uh, play to increase your odds, uh, or not the only like drawing cards. You can also play something like Angel Stream, <clears throat> and um, now let's just see what what happens when you add something like um, like Energy Stream. And for doing that, we can just have or we just have our bases here, like our fifty five percent again going first. And now we will look at um, stream, like energy stream. Just add four energy stream, leave um, emerald out, like uh, Magris out, Hulkus out, and so on. Just basis and plus basis plus four stream. So of course we increase the number of spells, so that will decrease the odds a bit. But the four stream will give you two additional cards instead of the only one with like Hulkus and Magris. So I expect it should be uh, higher. Um, and as we see here, um, the odds increase to 63.1%. So from 55 to 63 um, is like 8% by those four copies. And when we just compare them to um, for Emerald, just for Emerald, nothing else, like a basis for Emerald, um, it's like 59%. So in general, achieving your goal. As soon as turn five, it is better to have energy stream than to have emerald, and the difference is four percent, which is not small in my opinion. Um, and now comparing this to other cards like Hulkus, um, Hulkus is around the same as emerald. It's like 0.2 percent uh, difference. Um, <coughs> yeah, and again. Um, 
Magus is the worst out of those, um, which gives you like 65.6%. Uh, so when you look at our basis where we have like 55%, um, it's only like 1.5% or like 2% difference um, to, to the basis with uh, for Magus. And um, I have left the um, the most uh, juicy stuff, in my opinion, uh, for last, because um, I started playing uh, Crystal Memory in Lightwater Alzheimer's. And um, just because I think it really fits the deck, um, it achieves um, your goal. Playing Alzheimer's turn 5, because you play your Gladiator, you play Crystal Memory, you search for Alzheimer's. Or if you already have Algenus in hand, you can search for your Ark and um, protect yourself against this card from your opponent. Um, when he sees you have like Gladiators on board and uh, it's turn 4, they are threatened by your Algenus, play Cranium Clamp and you have uh, played Memory before. Um, and of course a nice Shield Trigger to search the perfect answer for the moment. And uh, we looked at like for Stream, for Emerald, uh, for Hulkers, uh, for Magras. And now let's look at Far Memory. And here we are. And what happens? It like skyrockets your probability to like 72% when you play four Crystal Memories, which is huge. We have like the 55 basis percent, and now we have like 72, which is yeah, like 17% difference is um, is huge for just like four Memories. And again, compared to Stream, and Stream was the second best, um, Stream was 36%, uh, 63%, and Memory is 72%. So 9% difference between like the best card and the second best card to achieve your goal, um, as on turn 5. So should you play like 4 Crystal Memory in your uh, Lightwood Azonus deck? Uh, probably not. Um, yeah, playing Azonus turn 5 is really huge, um, but it's not like, yeah, it's not like backbreaking if you play it on turn 6, for example. Um, or maybe there are situations where you won't play it at all because your opponent has like natural counters like Melnia or something. Uh, he's playing like Water Diagnos Agro and has like Melnia, or he's playing like Hydro Hurricane and plays like Giga Slug, uh, or I don't know, he's playing some weird Amyloid Burn and has Stagwendu and whatever. There are some cases where you don't really want to play this card. Um, and then you have some good, so some, some high quality other cards like Aqua Hulkers and Macros and so on to um, push through. <coughs> but when just looking at playing Alzheimer's turn 5, Memory is like the best card to go to uh, in your deck. Which is quite interesting in my opinion. And um, in my deck I play one copy. Um, Maybe I will go to like two because um, the odds are really, really huge. And um, oh, I also have, or I, um, Mr. Delasena also had a slide with um, only one memory. And I think that's also interesting. Instead of four memory, only go one memory. We have that here. You go up to 61%. So from our basis, like 55% to 61 with just one card is like a 6% increase, which is huge for just like one card. Adding one card, bam six or six and a half percent uh, more um yeah so uh, also with crystal memory when you play something like crystal paladin uh, against those uh, hydro hurricane decks or this heavy blocker decks um you can search all your one-offs like um, maybe you play like i don't know illusionary merfolk uh, the same you you can do with like for uh, for emerald for zirion and then Merfolk, uh, turn 5, it's like the same curve, you play Memory, get your Merfolk, play Merfolk next turn. <coughs> so, in my opinion, if you are playing like one-offs uh, in the Light Water as in your stack, um, I would highly recommend adding some Crystal Memories to the deck. And yeah, that's, that's it uh, for this video. Um, I hope you like this like different uh, stuff um, to what we usually see on this on this channel and please uh, leave a comment down below if you like this sort of content and if you want to see like 
more you can like suggest uh, some more decks where we can we have like a pretty like streamlined goal um which you can solitaire um maybe like fire energy rush could be an example like some probabilities there but um of course we can't like take enemy shield triggers into account there um this could be something maybe like another deck which um i i can't think of right now which have a, has a um a linear game plan or has like the one main goal um they want to achieve um yeah leave it leave it down below what you what you think what you would like to see next and um yeah we will see you in the next video bye Thank you.